Hello and welcome to the Dinosaur for week 16, another seven curious interesting things I saw last week, so let's crack on. Um, first one is about your brand's name or your product name. So uh, there's a really interesting study, um, not particularly decipherable from the image I'm showing, um, actually has concluded that the more feminine your brand name, the more likely it is to be bought or recommended. Um, so why is this? Uh, if you use more syllables in your brand name, if it front loads the vowels, uh, and also if you put more stress on the second or later syllables. Apparently those are the rules. Uh, as you can see from the, the graph in front of you, uh, Coca-Cola and Ikea are actually doing very well. Um, whereas if you're Facebook or Compaq, you're not doing particularly well at all. So um, if you are going through a rebrand, uh, this might be one more thing to think about. Uh, pretty much that's it. Um, really interesting this one. Uh, this is uh, from uh, Shenzhen University in China. Um, and it uses quite an old phone, so this is an iPhone 7. Uh, it's attached to a 3D printed mug, uh, and the mug is filled with the liquid. And what they then do is they then play a, pretty much a ringtone on the phone. The ringtone then vibrates the liquid, and the phone's own uh, sensors, motion sensors, can pick up the viscosity and the interaction of the molecules of the liquid in the cup. Um, based on that, it can tell within 95% accuracy what is actually in the cup. Obviously, you need to sort of tell it the types of liquid it might be encountering, but once you do, it can then pick up the liquid in the cup. And what it can also do is it can pick up things like water, um, but with contaminants in it as well. So you can tell pure water or dirty water. So um, this might be a really, really interesting way of um, finding out whether water is safe to drink or not. Um, yeah. Very, very interesting, very bizarre. Uh, follow the link and find out more. Um, this is going to be a little bit tricky to describe, but this is Flock. So this is Google's attempt uh, at bypassing or coming up with the future of ad cookies. So Flock is Federated Learning uh, of Cohorts, and as the name may suggest, it's all about cohorts. So um, now this is quite complicated, but I'll try and make it really, really simple. Uh, it, previously, cookies, what they did is you went to a website, um, Google would have a, a cookie dropped on that website, and they could tell where you went, uh, and therefore somewhere in Google, there is a file with your name on it that says, this is where you went, and it's got all the websites, got everything you clicked on, the baskets that you probably clicked on and didn't check out, and therefore any advertiser that's looking for somebody who is just about to buy some shoes would say, this is the person that's just about to buy some shoes, they had a checkout, blah, 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 they're probably ripe for shoes, etc. So the point is that Google have or had uh, a, a dossier on you, um, and therefore you're giving away all of your data and your privacy to ad companies. Um, so with people like Apple uh, saying, actually, that's not really the way we want to go forwards because it's not their business, quite literally, um, this has left people like Google, who it is their business, and they make most of their money from this sort of ad um, systems. Um, they want to then say, look, okay, we've got another system. And their system uh, is all about cohorts. So if you go to a website and you're looking for shoes, it will identify you as somebody who's probably looking for shoes. It will then give you a sort of random identification number, if, and which, will, which the browser needs to do for you. And therefore, that gets sent up to Google and says this person is part of a cohort of a couple of thousand people who are looking for shoes. Next time an advertiser then says, I would like to advertise to people looking for shoes, Google say, well, we've got all of these cohorts, lots and lots of cohorts, many, many of these thousand groups of people looking for shoes. And then the advertiser says, great, okay, can you show them these adverts? It doesn't necessarily know it's me, it just knows I'm part of that cohort. So Google um, are under the impression this is, this is a step forwards. However, a lot of the browser companies are saying, hang on a minute, we need to we need to do all this work on our browser to be able to then identify the website and honestly assign this stuff. And there are so many loopholes in this, it might actually be um, giving people or giving the ad companies more, um, or giving the people more problems, but the ad, uh, ad companies a little bit more uh, data than they imagined. So um, yeah, so the problem is, is that nobody's really going for this. So the people like the Electronic Frontier Foundation have created a website, which is uh, amiflocked.org, uh, where you can go there and tell whether you are actually being uh, tested in one of these cohorts currently. Uh, it's not fully operational, um, mainly because you've got people like Opera, uh, you've got like Safari, clearly, you've got the Edge browser, 
etc etc they're all saying they're not going to do this and it's only really um, Google Chrome that's looking for this at the moment so um, this is big news uh, nobody's really taking it up and only when lots of people take it up will it actually work for advertisers so um, if you've not heard of Flock then you probably should do uh, and this is important um, if you were <laughs> so you might have seen the Boston Dynamics robot pretty much everybody has um, and it was, uh, or you can buy it for £55,000, uh, $75,500, I think it's something like that. Um, however, if you don't have that sort of money, you've only got maybe £4,000, then you can buy this one. Uh, this is Alpha Dog. Um, and uh, yeah, clearly it's a bit of a copy of Boston Dynamics. Uh, I think Alpha Dog was even the code name of the original uh, Boston Di Dynamics dog. Um, however, you can buy this thing, it runs at 10 miles an hour. Um, which is a record for these sort of autonomous dogs. Um, just as a fun fact, you probably, if you're not a trained runner or not a regular runner, you also run at about 10 miles an hour. So uh, this thing <laughs> will probably chase you down eventually. Uh, it'll also outrun a spot the dog. But um, if you want one of these, they're available. I think they're available in, uh, this is the cheapest one. It's on offer right now uh, for 4,000. I think they do ramp up pretty quickly in price, but I think there's about four or five options on the website. Go go and spec yours. Um, brilliantly though, there's also uh, on the website, I should mention this, um, why are they making these? Well, they have what they call a secret plan or a grand secret plan. Um, <laughs> Obviously, like all secret plans, grand secret plans, they've got it on their website as well. Um, and the point of these robots is to save the planet, to make the planet a more sustainable place to be. Um, that's their grand secret plan. So go and have a look at that as well. Very curious. Um, Elon Musk is uh, boring to a company. So um, this is... Uh, uh, based on Teslas at the moment, and I guess it always will be, um, but this is in Las Vegas and it is a tunnel underneath Las Vegas. And the point is, is to uh, move traffic around uh, away from the traffic jams because you have autonomous driving, you can't guarantee um, all the other non-autonomous traffic is going to behave itself. So why not build a tunnel for all the autonomous, autonomous uh, cars to drive down? And as you can see, they've actually built one of the parts of the tunnel network under Las Vegas. So this is the Las Vegas Convention Center uh, loop, essentially. So you can see it right now. Um, currently, they're driven by humans and I think a maximum of 35 miles an hour or 50 55 kilometers an hour, something like that. Um, but eventually the whole point is, is you drive your Tesla down one of these things, goes into autonomous mode, and it just drives you wherever you're gonna go. Um, they curiously were supposed to be doing this in LA and DC as well, um, but they've gone quiet on that. So not quite sure uh, what's going there. Um, but yeah, so this is the future. Of course, lots of people saying, well, if you're privileged enough to own a Tesla, uh, then this is your nice privileged tunnel that you can do whilst everybody else has to go uh, overground. Um, but there you go. Um, if you want to go and do that, you can. Um, Spotify's car thing, uh, this has uh, been rumored for quite a while and they've finally launched it. Um, it's US only and only for Spotify Premium um, uh, members. Uh, and also, I think you also, you don't really own it, you only kind of rent it at the moment. But you stick this on your dashboard of your car, you connect it via Bluetooth, uh, and therefore you can either use the very simple dial um, or you can use voice to control your um, your Spotify and your car audio. So, um, yeah, you can use uh, just your voice commands um, and that's pretty much it. So it's their first foray into hardware. That's why it's kind of interesting. Um, pretty much that. There you go. Um, and finally, uh, one of my favorite things of the week. Uh, so this is uh, Creative Coder, um, Jatin, or Jatin, I think, uh, Patel, uh, who, um, if you've played a game with a rumble pack on a, a PlayStation or an Xbox or something similar, you will notice the vibrations in the handset when you shoot. Um, he's got some history here. He actually put lots of solenoids on a mouse last year, which was quite an interesting one. Um, and uh, as you then fired, it would kind of jiggle the mouse about just like you were, you were firing a machine gun. So this one he actually thought was need to be a bit more realistic. So he's got a one horsepower motor there, you can see, um, with, with an off-centered weight on it. So as soon as 
um, you shoot anything, it jiggles the entire table. Um, he did eventually tape down the, the mouse, uh, sorry, the, the monitor and the keyboard, um, but I thought it was really, really interesting. So you've seen some haptic suits uh, where if you're playing VR or even if you're playing normally, you can actually wear a suit. And when you get shot, it sort of vibrates or it can punch you, or even when you're um, holding something, it can kind of um, show you what you're, make you feel what you're touching. Um, just thought this was kind of neat. Uh, it is probably a little bit more realistic, um, but yeah. So if you, uh, also the, the, the plans and the code is available on his website. So please go and look it up if you want to make one of these things. Uh, with that, we are done. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.